workers. We imagine that technology will come from outside and go into the school and the teacher should take it and use it. We see the teacher as a user of technology. Digital technology is not the first technology used in the school. Everything in the school is technology, right? From the chalk, the blackboard, the duster, the textbook, the stage, the classroom, the furniture, the compound wall, everything is a technology because it's an artificial creation of human beings to create a, to, for a particular process. But digital technology is the only technology, or I would not say the only technology, people have said even textbook has been foisted on the school uh, by the system. But digital technology is completely foisted on the school and the teacher. And we know that anything that you foisted on the teacher will not work. That's why Deepshah will not work. Deepshah will not work because somebody sitting, some wise people sitting in Delhi have decided that they know everything that's good for the country. We need a Deepshah in every district, every block. Then it might work because then there's a possibility that the teacher and the local will own up the technology. So the first principle I would say for a technology program that will work is it has to be free and open digital technology. Please, I would request all of you to note it down. The minute technology is proprietary, it means it belongs to a vendor. The vendor is going to worry about this business. But I'm not even worried about profit. That's not the question because profit is made out of printing textbooks also. But the thing is, the need of every child is unique. The need of every classroom is unique. The need of every school is unique. No one technology created somewhere can help everybody. So it's free and open, the advantage is Every teacher can decide how to use it, when to use it, not to use it, is a teacher's choice. So the first answer is, is a teacher agency being supported by technology or the teacher agency being offshored by technology. So that's the first principle. Second principle is, do not take technology to children. I think it's a very bad idea because we all have learned enough about addictions. And you, it's like saying you take a children to a restaurant, you send them to a KFC restaurant and imagine they'll all order salad. They want to order kurkure and eat kurkure. So you give the children technology, they are going to go there and get the worst things for it because actually they are children, they are not adults. They don't know what's necessarily good for them. Therefore, the second principle of technology, first is free and open technology, never touch proprietary technology. Please don't fund projects where the proprietary technology is used. Please. That's the first principle because half the time the funders will create a problem by encouraging proprietary technology to be used. Second thing is put the digital technology in the aid of teacher development. You use technology only for the teacher, let the teacher figure out in the classroom what should be done should the teacher's choice. It's not the choice of the system or the vendor. So if your technology program is helping teacher development and secondly, if it is helping teacher agency by being free and open, then there is you have created the necessary conditions for it to succeed. It's not sufficient because the pedagogical idea that the technology is putting are very important. Now smart classroom, what is a smart classroom? We talked about a project that has a screen, right? Why are we debating about it? You give a, you give a project that has a screen to a school, just like you will give a library, just like you will give a toilet, just like you will give a compound wall. There's no vendor there. The teacher may use it, the teacher may not use it. How does it matter? So we should, our technology and education debates have to rise above, is a smart classroom good or bad? You give the infrastructure and let the teacher use when she wants to. The bigger part of technology and education is not the hardware. But what is the content? What is the pedagogy? And that should be decided based on educational principles and processes, not by vendors. So Kerala, for example, I would say it's a secret. Kerala is the best technology and education program in the world. I don't think Europe or America or Japan has anything remotely as effective as what Kerala is doing in government schools. And they follow both these principles. They invest excessively on teacher development. And they let the teacher decide what to do with technology in the classroom and they use only free and open technology. So I think these two principles, if you follow, you won't go wrong. It may not work, but it won't harm. Thank you very much.